I did a video a little while back that was looking at the Zoe test in comparison to some other tests in the market, such as a DNA test or a blood test. And what I wanted to do now is show you a bit about the UI and, and what you get. So you do your three tests, blood sugar, blood fat, and microbiome. And then what you have to do with Zoe is you have to log your food every day. But rather than counting calories, it's actually giving you a score on um, how good it how good that food or that meal is for your blood fat, your blood sugar, and your gut microbiome. What I really wanted to show you was a dinner, which is al almost at the, the peak of my powers. Zoe wants you to score over 75, and this particular dinner scored me 85. Um, so really high score. So I went shopping, especially to get a high scoring dinner. So I had rocket, spinach, kimchi, sunflower seeds, salmon, some cheddar cheese, asparagus, broccoli, an orange pepper, cucumber, olive oil, and a few dates. Everything in here was really excellent across those three measures, apart from the dates. So if I, if I click on the dates, um, this has a score of 30. And this kind of, this comes full circle to, well, how are these things really good? How does it know? In my profile, we can see the, the four results of what you did at the beginning of, of Zoe. So at the beginning of Zoe, you do your continuous glucose monitor, you go to the bathroom and you do your stool test, and then you eat your muffins and you do the blood fat test. And the continuous glucose monitor is getting real-time data the whole time. And then the other two tests, the blood fat and the stool, they have to go to a lab. And then they look at all this stuff as well as your, your diet. And they give you these four scores. So my blood sugar control, good. My blood fat control, poor. My microbiome uh, score, medium. And my diet assessment, good. I hope so, because I'm doing the Earthy 30. I'm eating 30 different plant-based foods a week. And I've been doing this for a while, which should improve my microbiome score over time. So if I click on that one, we can see that they give you a bit of an understanding. They're very good at educating. They really tell you the why behind everything they're doing on Zoe. And they also give you a bit of a, a, bit of a clue as to the different things that would affect your gut microbiome. So here they say that diet, quality, recent antibiotics, activity levels, sleep, where you're born, all of these things have an effect on your gut microbiome. And with Zoe, I'm looking to improve these things by really fine tuning exactly what I eat. So that then unlocks what are the things that I should be eating. So if I X out of this one and go to foods, we can see that proteins, I've got a list of proteins that are gonna be really good across those three metrics. So lentils, really good, almonds, pinto beans, all beans in fact, nuts, walnuts, chickpeas. Let's go to salmon because salmon was actually in that last meal. No impact on blood sugar, no impact on blood fat really, and then um, good for my gut health. So this is an example of a food that you should definitely be adding into your diet. So all in all, like there's so much stuff in this Zoe app, so much more than I thought I was gonna get. And I guess the real question is, what have I done differently since doing the Zoe test? Um, I've definitely stopped having as much red meat as I used to because that had a, a, a bad effect on, on my, my blood fat. And then actually in using Zoe in conjunction with my eight sleep mattress, which tracks the quality of my sleep, I started noticing that alcohol, too close to bedtime, and, and fatty meals, too close to bedtime, had a really adverse effect on the quality of my sleep. So Zoe, in conjunction with this sleep tracking, has really enlightened me on that one. I think in general, I've, I've just, I've been cheating a bit less now that I know the impact of some certain foods. I've, you know, prior to Zoe, I was probably getting two Uber Eats a week, and, and now I'm not really down to, to any. Uh, I've got a new favorite meal with my girlfriend. We have a bean curry that's got four or five different beans in it. And that's really, really excellent for my gut microbiome as a, according to Zoe. Like if we just remind ourselves 
that if we go into these um, beans and legumes, we've got black beans 100, lentils 100, soybeans 100, pinto beans 99, red kidney beans 99, chickpeas 91. So all of this stuff, all of these beans are really fantastic for all of those three metrics that we spoke about. Some other things that have changed. So I was having uh, bread and butter with honey, with a banana, some peanut butter, and then some, some sesame seeds on the top that I've now changed to no honey. I think Zoe, they've, they've really cracked it. I think prior to COVID testing, something this comprehensive would have been quite a difficult sell to the public and it still is quite comprehensive and you have to do a lot. I must admit some days I, I don't blog everything because logging isn't the most exciting of activities, but the amount of value you get from Zoe in terms of understanding the impact on food is truly remarkable. If you enjoyed this, check out some of the other videos on the channel. There's a couple of other ones about Zoe, both live and coming out. So if you'd like to know more about that, give them a go.